What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about the best baits for the post spawn. About a week or so ago, I did a where do bass go after the spawn, kind of talked about that spawn transition, the, the different phases the fish could be in, what to look for. If you haven't seen that video already, we'll link it down below in the video description. But in that video, I covered kind of what to look for depending on the types of fishery uh, you're fishing, either a highland or lowland reservoir, a natural lake, a river system, and then what to look for depending on what stage the fish were in. And I also recommended like five or six key baits uh, that I have a ton of confidence in for the post spawn. But today's video, we're going to elaborate on that a little bit because not every, you know, a 6XD, like I mentioned in that last video, it's a great, great crankbait post spawn into summer. But if you get in a, a clearer water situation, a highland reservoir maybe, there's some better options. So today's video, we're gonna talk about the different techniques and the key baits in those techniques to help hopefully uh, load your tackle box and load the bass this summer for you as we head, head into that summer, kind of spawn into summer transition. Building that tackle box, uh, you can take the different baits I talk about and the different scenarios and apply them to the different types of fisheries that you're fishing and maybe just to, you know pick a, a few baits out of it. But it's all about learning, all about confidence. So hopefully these baits will help you the next time you're out fishing and you don't know which type or color of crankbait to throw or even if you should be throwing a crankbait at all. So like I said in that last video, we talked about, um, you know, some fish stay shallow, some, some fish go deep. The shallow fish, those are your frogging, flipping, punching fish that you, that you catch shallow all the way in the fall. And then the fish that go out deep, those are your fish eventually you catch on big flutter spoons, big crankbaits, big jigs, big worms. Uh, you know, those are your, your ledge fish or your deep water fish. So let's kind of talk through that uh, at a more in-depth uh, level. So shallow fish. I love throwing moving baits, especially this time of the year. The fish are active, the water's warmer, you have the shad spawn, you have the bluegill spawn going on. So there's fish shallow uh, all the way into through the end of fall. You'll have fish in the very backs of pockets, chasing bait, blowing up on bait, eating bluegill, uh, and those are your fish that you're going to catch on your top water baits, on your punch rigs, uh, on your flip rigs, on your light shaky heads, that sort of stuff. So let's talk shallow and then we will transition and talk about the best baits for the deep fish. So starting off shallow, we're talking about moving baits. I left this one out last week because I tried to simplify it for you. But the whopper plopper, doesn't matter if you're out early chasing that shad spawn deal, the low light conditions, this is a bait that you can cover water. Again, you're looking for aggressive fish, you're looking for active fish, you're looking for um, fish that are willing to chase down your bait. A whopper plopper is a bait that you can adjust the speeds on, you can pause it if you need to, it still floats, but a whopper plopper allows you to cover water a lot easier than a popper or a traditional walking bait. It's a chuck and wind, cast and retrieve style bait. It's really, really easy to fish. Uh, that is a must as you head into summer. This guy right here. I typically, for the most part, I'll start with that color right there. That is called monkey butt. It is a shad ghost minnow type of color. Uh, if you're finding that they're not eating it right or they're just getting the back hook, you can go with a bone or a straight black. Those guys right there are a must. Sticking with top water, you know, last week I talked about, talk about these two guys right here. That is the pop. Max in matte shad, that is hands down uh, 
my favorite popper if they're eating bigger bait. That guy right there, that is the Jackal Gavaccio. I'm not sure why. I noticed this last week. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. That is big mono. I'm like, why would I have mono on a frog? Earlier this spring, I was down in Florida and I was doing that barramundi fishing and those fish will eat a frog. It's amazing. Um, but their teeth cut right through braids. So you actually have to use like 50 and 60, 80 pound monofilament um, for the abrasion resistance so those fish don't break you off. So I digress. That got gavacho right there. Again, I talked about that bluegill pattern. Those fish are up there eating bluegill. They're bluegill killers. I love that colorway, that, that color pattern, that popping frog. I can throw this in that same area that I throw the popper you know, skip it up underneath docks in the shade. Again, these fish are going to be the shallow fish. As you get into that warmer weather, they're going to be pulling into the grass. They're going to be pulling into shade lines, the darker areas that they can ambush from. And a frog is a must. So we talked about that, but I have a couple other ones for you now. If you find yourself in clearer water conditions, I like, that's where I switch from the Pop Max to the World Pop because of that right there. That is the Flash Boost. This is a popper that I can work in clear water. I can work it slow. And even when it's sitting there, that, that's, that metal inside is flashing like a, a scale pattern on a shad. Uh, and it's doing that secondary action. So as that fish is looking at it in that clear water, they just come up and just smoke it. They just, usually they suck it down, but they eat this bait. So if I find myself in clearer water, say I'm on a, a Highland Reservoir, I'm typically gonna go with this popper over the Pop Max. And I will say the Pop Max is a big popper. You can see it's quite a bit bigger than the World Pop. So if you find that uh, they're eating smaller bluegill or baby bluegill, smaller threadfin shad, try switching it up to this guy right here. And again, we'll link all these baits down below in the video description. But like I said last week, that is a must. It's an easy bait to throw. It, it, uh, it leaves a great bubble trail. But if I find myself on smaller bait and clearer water, I go with that guy. Same with the frog. If I find myself in clear water, or they're eating smaller bait, or highly pressured fish, that's when I go with this guy right here. Post-spawn fish, they've done their recoup, right? I talked about them coming off recoup from the spawn. Now they're looking to feed up. You might be fishing a fishery that has real small thread fin or silver sides, or a lot of boat pressure throwing your normal size frogs that's when I go with this little guy right there. That is the Kaira, Jackal Kaira. I've trimmed the legs down on this bully wall too, but this is a lot, look at this body size, completely different size profile for a frog. And we've caught, we've messed them up on this guy right there. Again, going with that real natural color, that, that bait fish, shaddy color uh, profile, color and profile, that is a must. So if you need to pick one frog, Go with either the, the, the Gavacho or the Bully Wall. This is more your open water um, walking frog. But if you find yourself in that situation where they're keying in on that smaller bait and uh, heavier, more pressured water, go with that Kara. So this guy right here, that is a color that Matt and I designed, mm, I don't even know, like seven or eight years ago maybe. Time's flying these days. Needs to slow down a little bit. but. That is um, our color we designed. We love that chartreuse belly, especially this time of the year as those fish are up there eating uh, the bluegill. It just kind of adds more color to the water and they love, they can see that chartreuse really, really bright and they smash this thing. Again, I've showed this frog now. It's kind of in my video pile. I've showed this frog now the last few topwater videos I've done. 
it's just a mangled mess. I've retired it, so it's it's in the video pile now. Bunch of teeth marks, hook rash. This is a fun time of year to be fishing because fish are in all areas of the lake, right? We talked about the, the three different phases, the pre-spawn, they're kind of transitioning, moving up, the spawn, they're up, now post-spawn, they're out, they're heading to where they're going for the summer, so they're either the deep water haunts or the, the shallow flats, grass, docks, that sort of stuff. So depending on how you like to fish, you can pretty much catch them however you'd like, which is really, really cool. We all have our favorite techniques, our favorite ways, our more, more confident techniques uh, that really comes to shine this time of the year because you'll have fish all over the place. Now, with that said, you're looking for schools, right? This time of the year, you're trying to find those schooled up fish. So um, we'll get to that. We'll get some to, to some baits that, uh, that help you find those a little bit quicker. So we talked top water. Anything else top water? Um, I don't want to leave out a traditional just walking bait, a spook walking style bait. Either the Rover, the River Sea Rover, the Reaction Innovations, the Vixen, or the Shower Blows. Either of those three, you know, I talked about it a couple, a few weeks ago now, I think. Um, just has different sounds, different profiles. Uh, those are my lineups for that traditional walking. But that's, that's top water moving shallow. Again, there's not a do-all, catch-all topwater bait. I love this guy right here. If I find that they're keying in on smaller bait or clear water, that's when I go with this guy right here. And then same thing with the frogs. Okay, also shallow. Now we're talking about grass. We're talking about, like I said, the bluegill eaters, the shad eaters. Uh, two other baits I didn't talk about in that last video. One is gonna be a spinner bait right? A shad profile, lots of vibration, lots of sound, lots of visibility, especially if you have that shad spawn going on. It's a bait that is extremely weedless, so you can fish it around through wood, uh, around dock pilings, lay downs, again, low light conditions as those shad are up there spawning on the hard surface, surfaces doing their thing. That is a must. I added one more for you that I love throwing this time of the year, the square bill. If those shatter up on riprap, you know, say say the riprap of a dam or, you know, the backwater riprap, maybe someone's done their shoreline in rock, uh, or there's a hard point, a hard surface, maybe even a, a boat ramp, right? The square bill is something I can throw up there, I can burn it, I'm fishing it fast, has some sound, those aggressive bluegill and shad killers will eat the square bill. That is that biggie in the abalone shad. That is a key bait for me if I can't get them on the spinner bait. The other thing I wanted to talk about last week, I talked about um, a swim bait. I talked about the swammer. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more too but I felt like I left out, I didn't want to completely leave out the Kitek because I love throwing a Kitek still, but if you're a shallow fisherman, that Kitek on that flashy swimmer is still up there in my arsenal, fishing through the stuff, right? As that water comes up, you get more debris in the water, you start getting uh, algae blooms, you start getting grass, you just start getting more and more stuff and it makes it hard to throw that exposed hook, right? That's when I throw the flashy swimmer. It stays weedless. You can throw it on heavier line. If you need to get, you hook a big one, you need to get it out. Uh, you, you don't have to be afraid of throwing light line on the flashy swimmer. Uh, that works on that swammer as well. I talked about the swim. That swammer swim is awesome. It's more of an aggressive kick. So you can throw that on the, uh, the flashy swimmer as well. But you guys staying shallow, fishing shallow, throwing some kind of swim bait on, you know, rigged on that flashy swimmer is key. I think that about wraps up the shallow stuff. 
Uh, now let's talk about the deep water. Let's talk about the guys that are chasing those fish that are going out on the ledges, out on the humps or the breaks, the high spots in the rivers. Um, you know what I forgot? I forgot this real quick, shallow. This is probably the most uh, power fishing technique there is. So along with frogging, you have your flipping and punching. Talk about this real quick and then we'll get to that, that deep water stuff. This is the time as you, as your fishery, the grass grows up and uh, you know, maybe in the beginning you're using some kind of flipping jig. It's the dirty jigs, Canterbury flipping jig, right? Real stout hook, real good weed guard. I have that paired up with a beaver, but this is something that you're flipping around isolated pieces of cover. Brush piles, dock pilings, uh, grass edges, that sort of thing. Those fish come out and they murder a flipping jig, okay? Once that cover gets really thick and once that grass gets matted, and you're throwing a, t a frog on top and sometimes they won't come to the top to eat, you have to punch through it. That is a one ounce tungsten uh, and that is the Missile Baits D-Bomb, okay? I love throwing the D-Bomb. I like throwing the Beaver. Works great as a jig trailer. Also works great as a punch bait. And then also I love throwing the Big Bite Baits BFE. It's, it's a it's more of a uh, more of a cylinder body. Comes through that heavier cover a little bit better, and I've caught some absolute freaks on this guy right here, especially that color. Um, but I'll link all that stuff. That's called tilapia. I'll link all of it down below in the video description. But uh, along with frogging, you want to go below the surface. Hammer time. Now it's time to throw that big weight in there. Ounce ounce and a half, half ounce and three quarters, even two ounce sometimes. Uh, you bobber stops, you got your peg stops, big stout hook, heavy braid, 7-Eleven, extra heavy, it's power on power and you're getting those big fish out of that gunk, okay? That's your shallow fish. Now let's go back to the deep water fish. Those fish that are transitioning out, those, those uh, secondary points working their way out to get to that main lake point, that rock pile, that island top, that hump, that saddle, whatever it may be. You know, last week I talked about this guy right here. The Striking 6XD. That is a winner. If I had to pick one, it'd be that guy because it, it, it catches fish early on. And even, if, even with a little bit colder water temps, and it catches fish all the way through fall, uh, that guy is a must. But some different scenarios clear water, uh, colder water a little bit, that will change things up. If I find myself in either of those two conditions, maybe I'm on, maybe I'm on a highland reservoir, I'm not fishing a, you know, a, a river system or something with some murky water. If I'm on a, a body of water that has a little bit colder water, I'm starting with this guy right here. That's our crankbait Matt and I designed a few years ago. That's the tactical DD crank. That just has a tighter action swim. It, we designed it to be a cold water crank, but we have smashed in Mexico, we've smashed in Texas, warm water, we've caught them. The warmer it gets, that's when we'll transition to a couple of these other ones. But if you find yourself in that condition, check out that guy right there. Again, last week I tried to simplify it, just gave you just five or six just key baits and they all work. Now we're just adding some different scenarios and then different types of fisheries uh, to better represent the fishery you might be fishing. And you can take those little nuggets of information and apply that to pick the baits for your fishery. So talk about clear, colder water. We start with that tactical DD. Another one that I like to go with, um, it's gonna be that Rapala, either the DT-16 or the 20, okay? Great color, great action. What I've found with this bait specifically that's different than the other baits. 
with the advancements of technology and forward-facing sonar, doesn't matter if you're throwing a glide bait, a swim bait, a, a drop shot, whatever. You can see your baits for the most part on your uh, electronics. This guy right here, when it says DT20 or DT dives to 16, it gets down to that and it's it stays there. It suspends. It's not a real high float bait, so it doesn't get down and you pause it and goes up a ton it actually stays down there. And I've caught more fish on this bait right here, pausing it, suspending it like a jerk bait, straight up, burning and getting it down there, pausing, burning, pausing, pausing, letting it sit there, and then just the rod will load up. So that bait right there, uh, if you find yourself on a more heavily pressured fishery, lots of guys throwing the 6XD, Try throwing this guy right here, either the 16 or the 20. Uh, both these guys are great. Now, last but not least, two more for you in the crank category. This is the Azuma. Great, great uh, deep crank. So these are like your 20 plus footers. There's the 20, the 22, the 25. That is an awesome bait. And it's also the same category that you might find yourself throwing the 10XD. Both great deep water cranks, a little bit different action, uh, less guys throwing this one and we've caught a ton of fish on it. Uh, it has that angled face. It, it doesn't pull nearly as hard on the shoulder and arm as the 10XD, a little bit easier to fish, but these guys, um, if you find yourself in that post-spawn situation where that break is just a little too deep for the 6XD or the DT20, that rock pile is just a little bit too deep for those baits right there, that's when I transition and go with those deeper, uh, deep, deep diving crankbaits, okay? Okay, so we got that out of the way. I want to talk about this bait right here for a little bit. Um, maybe you guys have heard Matt talk about it. Maybe you've seen us catch fish with it. Maybe you haven't. Uh, but it fishes in that same category, same zone, if you will, as the deep cranks. And that is this guy right here. This is a, I'm going to call it a biffle head a wobble head, it's got a head that is on a, it, it, it moves. It allows that bait to, to move. It's not like a straight up shaky head where the bait is just attached. It is a wobble head, okay? Either the Zoom, that's the Z-Craw, or the X-Zone Adrenaline Craw. Both of these baits are great. And this bait is really, really easy to fish. You literally cast it out where you would throw your jig or your swim bait on bottom. And you just reel it just slow enough. This thing's down there swimming on bottom. You got, like I said, these two baits, the, the Z-Craw or the um, Adrenaline Craw have a ton of action in the plastic, in the, in the, the, the kickers of that bait, okay? When you're reeling it, this thing's super weedless, but you have really, really good bottom contact feel. You're banging rock, clunk, 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 right? You're feeling what's going on. You bring it up through a brush pile, whatever. Again, it's weedless. You can fish it straight braid if you want. Typically we throw a leader, but the fish just come unglued and absolutely hammer this bait. You know, I'm not sure if it's just, I mean, it's, it's, mimicking a craw, like a craw, a, cray, a, cray, a crayfish or a crawdad on bottom swimming, but they absolutely come unglued, either some kind of June bug color or some kind of green pumpkin. Uh, but this is a really easy bait to fish and uh, it plays in that swim bait on bottom and uh, deep crank category. So this guy right here is a bait that really shines for us all the way through summer and fall. So I wanted to add that to the arsenal. Again, I'll link all this stuff down below the video description, but either the Adrenaline Craw 
or the Z-Craw, those guys are a must. Just a couple more for you guys. Um, if you are that deep water fisherman, you know, last week I talked about a shaky head. Shaky head, June bug color. Number one, our favorite color all the way through fall. However, if you find yourself in a clear water situation, I love this color. It's called Bama Bug. And you'll see a version of this color in a lot of different plastics. It's actually green pumpkin, black flake on top, and then June bug on bottom. So in that clear water, you don't have to go straight, straight June bug. You can kind of tone it down a little bit. And sometimes when I'm in that, that clear water, uh, I just get more bites with uh, that color right there or some kind of pink. This is actually the missile baits. That's that magic worm. That's the six inch. Uh, some kind of like Aaron's magic or something like that. Kind of that clearer, brighter pink color works really, really good in clear water. If not, I'm in that kind of stained, dingy water where that water's come up, kind of murked up. That's when I'm going back to that straight June bug. Okay. Ooh, what else? I think the last thing we can talk about is a jig. You know, I talked about um, talked about that that pitching jig, Canterbury pitching jig. If I'm fishing out deep, I'm fishing rock piles. That's when I'm gonna go with that more of that arky style head. Natural color natural kind of action as a trailer but that guy right there is money okay you can kind of hand in hand if you want to throw bait caster throw heavy line go with the jig you want to throw a little bit lighter line go with the shaky head but these guys right here are great bottom contact slow finesse fishing baits and guys that that's that's what i have that is my lineup those are the baits tied onto my rods uh, that's the stuff that i'm fishing right now i'm a little early still for the deep deep stuff here on chickamauga but different lakes around the country are different phases of the spawn but don't be afraid to go out and check because you might see one or two fish out there on those ledges on those humps but eventually you're gonna see those schools those mega schools and it's gonna be a lot of fun so guys hopefully that video helped more in-depth kind of when, where, and why as far as the baits. Last week we talked about where those fish are going. You know, up shallow, they're looking for grass, shade line, ambush spots, out deep, they're looking for that, that the rock on their way out. They're looking for the isolated pieces of cover, the secondary points. Uh, it's basically that pre-spawn transition in, in reverse. They're working their way out along the same pass they did and they work their way in. Um, hopefully that guys helps you guys. Uh, down below, I'll link all these baits and uh, we'll link them all by category and uh, take the little bit, bits and pieces of this information. You know, maybe you're on a lowland reservoir, but you have clear water. You might wanna go this you know, route on a bait or maybe you're on a, a river system and you're, they're, they're pulling water so it's kind of dingy so you need to go this route or color or version of the bait. So hopefully that kind of set up the different scenarios for you and uh, allows you to mentally build some confidence and then when you get out on the water, have success throwing these baits because we have. We have a ton of success in all these baits Otherwise, we wouldn't recommend them. But guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. We'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Again, if you liked this video or learned something from it, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.